right. Uh, yeah, so mountain lions, they have a really long tail. They use it for balance. It's about a third of their, like, the body. It's about a third of their body's length. So they're just like really long, whippy tails. So uh, the original, like the, the photograph that I took this from, um, it didn't have a tail, but the tails are just so cool. I had to put a tail in there. So yes, let get started with our basic shapes. So I'm gonna um, just go over it really quickly before we get started drawing. Um, when we draw our basic shapes, up here is a small circle, right? And then we'll draw the muzzle separately. So that's a small circle. And see that little circle of ears. And he's just like a very round, very round boy. So when we get started, we're gonna do lots of circles. Which is interesting because when I was drawing, um, I did a couple drafts of him. Uh, at first, I was going to have us do a profile of just the face, but the body is just so cool and wanted to include the tail somehow. And the face is pretty square, actually. So it's interesting how front on, it's like a cute little round face, and then profile is like a perfect square. Okay, so that in the center, a little, a little above the center of your um, paper, I'm going to draw just a small circle. And remember, we have to draw light in case we want to erase. <coughs> And then right down the middle, we're going to draw a line. It's going to be our center line. And then cutting in half on the bottom of the circle, we're going to draw an even tinier circle. And notice how I'm making sure that this circle is also on the center line. This is gonna make sure that the mountain line is directly facing us and not its mouth going off different directions. Uh, for the ears, we're also gonna put a circle. We don't wanna put it directly on top of the big circle. We wanna bring it in side, just like how we did the mouth, directly inside. As you see in our reference, he's standing on, he's like he's looking down at us. He's not looking straight at us. So we want to bring these ears lower. Okay. <clears throat> right at the top of this, um, like the mouth circle that we made, we're going to make another line. That's um, horizontal. If you've ever learned how to draw like a person's face in another class, you might recognize like, oh, this is like the facial structure lines. All right. And then right on the, this line. Two more circles that are even tinier. Right now, it looks like we have an adorable teddy bear. That's going to change soon. Okay, so that's the basic head. Now we're going to go down to the body. Okay, so we're going to first make a long over right down here. <clears> 
<clears throat> we might adjust it later depending on our legs. Okay. Then on the side of this oval, come down. Come down your legs to about right there. We could even start putting in where we want to put our feet to this little rock. We can decide is it a rock? Is it a stump? Is it a unusually large mud pile? Do whatever you want. Okay. Down to okay. Then parallel to these lines, we're going to draw another line to create the arm. And we're going to go to shape. Okay. Again. Parallel this one. Okay. And then line and around down there. Okay. So now we can start putting in our paws. Instead of drawing every little toe, we want to start with a big round shape first. So we're happy with the size of our paws before we're getting into details. Okay. Okay. I like that size. This one's a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So once I'm happy with the size of my paws, I can start putting in those round, almost like C shapes or backward Cs in this particular paw. So one, two, three. All right, and then when you get to what is on the inside, it's straighter. Okay. Now this side, this side is going to be C's. So one, two, three. Again, straight. On the back end. Okay. So our mountain lion is looking straight at us, so we don't see the whole body. Where if he was, you know, looking to the side, we would see his whole body stretched out. But since he's looking straight at us, his body is kind of hidden behind the front of him. Um, that means it's foreshortened. So we're only going to see his belly poke out a little bit. Draw a little round shape right here. And then just below that, another round shape. It just goes straight down. So that's, this is his chest his body and his haunches, his hips. There we go. And then there's our basic shape. So now we're going to get into details. I'll give you guys a few seconds to catch up a little bit if you need to. Um, at this stage, you can um, 
maybe think about like, okay, what's the tail gonna do? Am I gonna have it go lower? Is it gonna be whipping around like he's cutting down a little mouse? Think about what your tail is gonna be doing. You could also think about what they're standing on. You could do a little rock fixture like I'm doing. You can do maybe he's standing on a stump. You could draw a little stump. Just gonna draw a little, little rock mound. All right. <clears throat> so now we're at this stage. We can start putting in our details. So let's start at the top with the ears. Super simple. So um, house cats have pointy ears, right? And um, so a lot of wildcats like lynxes, uh, mountain lions and lions in Africa too, as a matter of fact, they have round ears. So we're gonna make sure not to give them pointy cat ears, we're give them nice round ears. This is kind of comical that I'm giving these cat facts um, as my cousin is actually home and she's worked with these animals. <laughs> I'm sure she's gonna correct me after class. <laughs> So I'm just kind of flattening out the top of the head so it's not a perfect circle. Okay. And now on each side of their cheeks, I'm gonna extend this out a little bit. So it's more oval, like think like cute little chunky cheeks. Don't think about the teeth inside that are gonna eat you. Just think of the cute little chunky cheeks that are sticking out. There we go. Okay. So right about where your original circle runs through the smaller mouth circle. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. So right about here, I'm gonna put in, we're just gonna start out with a little upside down triangle for the nose. We'll start out with basic shape. And then on each side underneath, I'm going to draw two half circles. Those are going to be the top lips. I know I said I wanted to put more um, color into our paintings, but I couldn't help it because the mountain lions, I love their faces. I, like they don't have a lot of markings, but like I love their really intense eyeliner and they're like cute little markings on their mouths. I had to do it. Okay, so once you have that, 
We'll draw another half circle right underneath for the bottom of his chin. Still looks like a teddy bear. We're going to make, make it look more cat like in a moment. I think what's really going to help is the intense eyes. <clears throat> you might have um, heard of a makeup term called cat eyes, where you put a lot of eye shadow. Uh, part of that is from literally cat's eyes. So we're going to cut through our perfect circles right here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see more. Make sure my hand isn't in the way. So I'm going to cut through the top of these circles and go up. On both sides. And then again, cut through the bottom of the circle. And we're going to go down. See how I'm curving, but it's still smaller than that original. It's down to a point on each side. So we went up, cutting through. And we went down, cutting through. Goes to a point on each end. And then inside your eye shapes, you still have this even smaller circle. These, they literally look like they're wearing makeup. They're so cute. Terrifying, but cute. All right, so I'm looking at my reference and my um, drawing. I'm noticing, like, okay, maybe I need to bring my neck up more. So I'm going to extend this just up to the ear just to give it more. Like his head's kind of careening a little bit, checking who out. <coughs> And then we're going to come down on the other side. That's about where the shoulder is. Okay. All right. So right now we can start erasing some of our underdrawing. So now. I'm going to let you guys uh, catch up. Those who are ready to move on, you can start erasing some of your underdrawing. So you can start erasing the center lines. There we go. Okay, I've got a lot of good detail here. That's why I'm taking my time erasing. I don't want to erase anything that I could climb on, right? Okay. So then... Okay. Okay, is there anything I don't like that I like on the other one? Maybe the ears could be small. I don't know. It doesn't mean you need to make your ears smaller if you like them like that. 
I'm just being Okay. So I'm going around, I'm kind of going over. You're seeing my underline. Okay. So that tummy right here. It maybe I could bring in the butt a little bit. Okay. And then this kind of fades into nothingness. So I'll just do this a little bit. All right, we're at this point. Now we can start putting in our uh, tail. So in my original, I had it way, way out there. I think this time I'm just gonna do a little more simpler. So what I like to do when I'm figuring out what direction I want something to go, whether it's um, legs, arms, tails, what have you, is I'll just start with like a stick figure, just a line. See, okay, do I like it? Do I wanna adjust, do I wanna erase? This to be a little more like that. That's nice. I like that. That way I'm not doing a bunch of details and then realizing I don't like it. Right, so now I'm going to thicken up the line. They have very thick tails, so don't make it like really thin, like a rat tail. Make it real thick. If you guys are on Instagram, there's an account, it's called Irma the Puma, and this Russian couple claims that they rescued a mountain lion, and now they keep it as a pet. I don't, obviously don't recommend or uh, approve of somebody keeping a wild animal as a pet, but they have a lot of great pictures of Irma the Puma. Uh, that you normally wouldn't see of, of them in the wild. So, and she's a very beautiful cat. And she wears puffy jackets and it's adorable. I, yeah, at least just check it out. It's very fun just to see a puma in that setting. Got the tail. I really like it. I like it a lot. Okay, yes. All right. So now, don't worry about the trees. We're going to do our Bob Ross trees in the painting stage. Uh, the only thing I would do now is so for um, the mountain lions. There's like a definite, there's a definition on the bridge of their nose. So I would just barely draw a line from the corners of the eyes to the corners of the nose, just to remember that. Just to keep some structure when you're putting in like shadows. Just very light, not too dark. There we go. Okay, good. So now we're done drawing. I'm just going around, erasing anything that I think is really dark. 
Um, I'm not erasing completely. I'm just lightening my drawing. So when we paint over it, it's not overpowering the paint. And then once we're happy with that, we're going to get started. Okay. All right. Get my paint down. Okay. So so once you are done with your drawing, you want to get your paint brush, make sure your paints are wet. And we're going to start by mixing a light brown. Um, does anybody, um, I ask this almost every week if you enjoy, but it's, it's still it's good to remember. Uh, what three colors make brown? Chat, you can speak it, whatever. Yes, red, blue, yellow. Thank you, Natalie and Tracy. So we're going to mix our red. Get our red, clean off my brush, get some yellow, clean off my brush, and pick up blue. All right, let's see what we get. All right, that's a brown. It's a very red brown. So we're trying, let's just test it. Okay, that's a brown. But um, this is a little more yellowy, like almost like a tan. So let's try adding a little bit more yellow, I think. Yellow is going to help a lot. Yellow, maybe a little bit of blue. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's already better. A little bit. Let's try that. Okay, that's a light brown. That's pretty close. Okay, so the brown you want to make for your mountain lion, you want it to have a little bit more yellow than the red and the blue. You want it to be a light brown, almost like a tan. Okay, so and you want to make a lot of it because the whole cat is this color. You don't want to run out halfway through painting your mountain lion. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so once you have your light brown, we're just going to get started. Uh, there's a lot of little details, so remember, uh, if you have a smaller brush, use it. Uh, I think I'm going to start with my smaller brush, because just because I'm going to start with the head. Let's put my big one down. Make sure to wet my brush before I dip it in the paint. Fill my brush up with paint and I'm just going to go in and this is just going to be our first wash. We're going to do a couple washes. Uh, you'll notice that there's some areas that have white like uh, the base of the mouth. 
and the chest. It's lighter. So when we put in our, uh, our brown, we don't want to get those covered with paint. So we don't have white paint, we just have the white of the paper. Oh, and, and inside of the ears, yeah. Has anyone ever seen a mountain lion before? Maybe at the zoo or a camping? The first time I went hiking alone with Josie, I saw a mountain lion print and that about set me over the edge. <laughs> Just because there wasn't anybody else to kind of be like, okay, well, it might be old or it could be a dog, Cecily. Getting close to the mouth, being very careful not to paint the mouth. Okay. And if you want a soft transition, clean your brush. I knocked off the water just so it's not, doesn't puddle up. And come up right next to it with water. That way it's not a harsh line. It kind of fades together. There we go. Okay. So now we're gonna keep going down. I might switch to my big brush now. Right. Down. The reason I switched from my little brush to my big brush is I don't want to use a teeny, teeny, tiny brush to fill up this huge space. It will take me a million years. Okay, notice I avoided the chest. Okay. And so it's not, it doesn't look like a Pokemon. All right, we don't want it to be like a really harsh line, like that transition. You clean your brush just so it's just water. And then paint with just water right next to it. And there we touch it with your brush. And then now it's gonna have a nice soft transition. See how it's already a lot softer on the right side than the left side? Much better. All right. And this works best when your paint's still wet, but if it's drying off, um, you could always kind of scrub a little bit, not too hard, just scrub a little bit with your brush and it'll kind of reactivate that dry paint. Uh, when the weather is really hot, uh, that can affect your paint. Your paint might dry a little faster. Um, same thing when it's cold, it might dry slower when it's cold. 
um, a professor when I went to art school told me once that he used to dry his oil paintings by sitting them in his car and letting them just bake in his car. Usually oil paintings take about a week to dry. I guess it would dry within the day. So, yes. Now we come back here with the table. Again, if you feel more comfortable painting smaller areas with your smaller paintbrush, feel free. Don't set yourself up for failure. Use whatever makes you feel comfortable. Okay. And from now, we're just going to fill in this little center area with the beige. You can't see it, it's kind of out of focus, but this is where the back of the body is. I'm just going to lift in a little bit of the paint just so. It Transitions more from the chest. And I lift the paint by having a clean brush, making sure it doesn't have um, a lot of water and it sucks up the water that's on your uh, painting. There we go. All right. At this point, we're waiting for things to dry. Um, you can mix. So for here, I just kind of mixed a few different colors. I think I mixed a couple browns, uh, maybe a couple greens. It was a pretty um, covered rock. It had a lot of like moss and lichen on it. Lichen, lichen. Like so I'm going to mix a couple different browns, maybe green. Doesn't have to be very specific. And that's just for this mound right here. If you're doing a rock mound, maybe you're doing a stump. It's up to you. All right. So again, yeah, might save that. I'm going to go where it's a clean spot, pick up some red, pick up some blue, pick up some yellow, mix it together, and I made a dark brown. I'm happy with that. Turn off my brush, and I'm going to mix it green. So, mix it in. Hi, buddy. My dad, my dad's dog came out. So, mix it green, yellow. We notice I'm not doing a whole lot because it's it's not that important. We're just doing mostly brown with little bits of green here. I even put in another brown. I like to mix another brown. Not trying to color match. Just mixing a couple different shades. It's dark color. You like it black. Oh, nice. Okay. 
So now that we're at this stage, my uh, foods are already dried really quick because it's it's very hot. And I'm just going to cover my entire raw with water. If for some reason your cooler is still kind of wet, you might want to wait an extra minute or so. And we're going to be doing something that's called a wet on wet technique. That means that we're wetting the paper with just water and we're dropping in paint. And now, um, instead of having all this control when we painted in our mountain lion, we're not gonna have a lot of control. We're gonna let the paint kind of do its own thing. So see how it's spreading when I put the paint down? I'm just gonna start dropping in colors. And the paint's only gonna go wherever I put the water. There we go. So it doesn't look like much. I don't want to overwork it. We're just going to let the paint do its thing, let it dry. Okay. While we let that dry, um, I couldn't find a lot of stories about mountain lions. Um, yeah, it did look like orange on the camera. I noticed that. It's weird how the camera and the um, what it looks like in real life kind of slightly different. So there aren't a lot of stories with mountain lions that I could find. Uh, one that I found was from a, uh, a tribe called the Shoshone Banoff people, and they're from Nevada. And this story was a long time ago. So in Nevada, there's these fields that were um, covered in lava at some point because of there, there were volcanoes at some point there. If you've ever been to Nevada, it's very arid, it's very deserty. But years and years and years ago, there were forests. And in this story, there's a forest. And the story is called The Wolf, the Fox, the Bat, the Bobcat, and the Cougar. Before the lava field was actually here, this used to be forested rivers where the Shoshone Bannox used to live in harmony. There used to be lots of water and food for them, so they were very happy here. But then all of a sudden, as the legends say, there was a warrior group. They were very vicious little people who drove the Shoshone Bannox away with, from their prime forest area. These warriors were very vicious. They were experts with their bows and arrows. And so the Shoshone Bannox held a council, a great council, and they were wondering what they were going to do with these vicious beings. So they elected one of their most prominent medicine men to journey out, say a prayer, do a vision quest, and try to figure out how to get rid of the vicious little people that came in and invaded their territory. The old medicine man agreed and he took a journey into the forest. He was following a bright star until the bright star led him into an opening. There was the wolf, the fox, the bobcat, and the cougar. The cougar had a head of an Indian and his paws were hands, which made the medicine man scared. But the cougar turned around and talked to him in Shoshone and said, do not be scared. He heard from the animals that the medicine man was coming. So he said, don't be scared of the bobcat, the wolf, the fox, because they are spirits. We'll help you. What do you need? So the medicine man told them that these vicious little people got into their territory and ran them off. 
and they were wondering how to get rid of them. The spirits held a council and then the leader turned around and said, we will help you under one condition, that none of your people, be it Shoshone or Benok, will hunt the cougar, hunt the bobcat, hunt the fox, hunt the wolf, and don't eat them. Don't kill them. Stay away from them. If you guys agree on that, then the spirits will help the Shoshone Bannock drive these people out. But this is pretty dry, so I think we can still work on our shadows. All right. So we'll stop there. And we'll get back to our painting. And just a warning, this uh, the story isn't as weird as the ones we've seen, we've heard before. Um, but it's still very to the point, you know. It ends abruptly. <laughs> and it does have a lesson. But nobody's gonna be uh, turning into fish and stuff like that. There, there's the cougar with the head, the human head and hands. That's a little weird. But other than that. Okay. So we got this going on. I think I'm going to use my color that I have here and add a little bit more red, just a little bit. I want to get that really nice red orange that's going on here. Just a little bit more red, just a teeny tiny bit. Red is so strong, we don't need a lot of it. Test it out. It looks like what I'm looking for. We want to test it out. Okay, so our first layer was that. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. So we're looking just for a little bit more red. Yeah, that's really close. Okay. So now... I'm going to switch to my smaller brush again. Remember, I work with the head. Whoop. So, paint me down the middle of my head. Going down, sides, and with the ears. And when I get to about halfway, I clean my brush. So now it looks like you've got a swim cap on. That's fun. I clean my brush so it just has water. Come up right underneath it. Start painting with just water and barely touch the paint. So it fades down. It looks less like a swim cap. Come on, let's see, see what's going on. So see how now it's kind of fading down. It's not super harsh line. Let that do its thing. Now we're gonna to go to the body. Same thing. We're going to pick up our more red, light brown. Come up right next to it. And come down. Cover the legs. And then I'm just going to cover between the toes. I want these toes to kind of have some definition. There we go. Again, we don't want this harsh line. 
So we're going to clean our brush. There's just water. Come up right next to it. Barely touch it with our brush. And now it's just going to fade. Same here with the feet. Come up with just your brush and it'll fade. All right. Now here on this side. And come down here on this leg, all the way down. Just have a little bit of a toe. There we go. Again, we don't want a harsh line. We do not want a cougar to look like a Pokemon. You know how um, Pokemon sometimes have like circles on their bodies or they have like very harsh black lines on their toes. We don't want that. Okay, coming down here with my back legs. We just see back here. All right. Now with the tail. I'm going to come just on one side. Just on one side of the tail. Again, we don't want a harsh line. Getting off our brush, coming up with just a plain wet brush. And now it's going to fade into an ombre. There we go. Perfect. Good. Okay. If you have a little bit, um, hold on. I So I put way too much water on this rock. I overestimated the drying power of a hot summer day. It's okay. I'm just gonna let that keep drying. Um, as we wait for that to dry, we can start mixing our shadow colors. So our shadow colors that are come that are come down here, maybe the base of the tail. We're going to start getting into that very lovely um, shading that I love on the mountain lion's face, ears. So we're going to mix a dark brown. So I'm just going to clean up a little space. I don't have to use my light brown anymore, so I can give myself some space. Now I'm going to mix dark brown. So same thing. Yellow. Yellow. And blue. I'm just gonna start with that. Probably gonna need more blue. All right, so I made it a red brown again. I want to see a dark brown. So to make it darker, let's start by adding blue. Okay. Let's do that fine. Might be black. Let's check. All right. Let's see what we made. Oh yeah, that's a pretty dark brown. It's almost black. I kind of want it to be a brown though. I'm gonna add a little bit more red. Just a little bit. Let's 
don't really see the color difference. So it's a little bit more brown. It's very reddish brown on here. A little bit blue. It's just playing around with colors. Just experimenting until you find the one you like. Okay, I like that one. That's a nice dark brown. All right. So I've got my dark brown. I'm going to start, let's start with the body first. Let's start right here. Let's kind of separate these body parts that are all foreshortened. So I'm going to come on the side where the shape of the belly is. So we got that going on. Follow the side where the legs are. Now it's completely in shadow. We don't got to worry about it. There we go. Now we go here. Underneath the belly, just underneath here. And let it dry a little bit. Before it gets too dry. Well, actually, no, yeah, let it dry, and then I'm going to show you how to lift something that's already dry. And that's how we're going to get this nice little fading of the belly right here. Okay. So now this tail can peek out. Just right here. See how it's already starting to. A little more 3D. You could also put a little bit of shadowing underneath the tail. Just underneath. You, while it's wet, you could also um, soften your shadows too. There we go. So I just used plain water with my brush and I just kind of touched it and now it's fading to a nice pumper. Okay. So now we're coming up more. I'm gonna use my brown to kind of outline this shoulder. There we go. These are coming alive. These are coming. Okay. Now coming up next to the head and this neck that's peeping out. Oh, by the neck. This is going to bring the head forward so it's not like a little chunky neck. Head's coming out. Okay. And again, I don't want it to be a harsh line. He's outside. If he was inside and you had a light bulb on him, Maybe you would give harsh lines, but since he's outside, it's going to be all nice and soft lighting. Okay, so now getting into the head. You know what, actually you forgot the feet. 
underneath the feet, with the feet. Just so he's not floating, he's grounded. There we go. So now we can do the head. Clean off my big brush, set it down. Because remember, we're not leaving our paint brushes in our water. Use my little brush. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna have to mix more of this dark brown. Okay. Um, so if you still have brown, you don't need to make another brown. I'm just refilling the brown that I ran out of. This is why it's important to mix big batches because uh, then your color matching and that's not fun. I got it, pretty close. Okay, so now I'm using my teeny brush. And come underneath the eye. Down. Down. Right here. Again. And I'm going to lift that a little bit too because it looks really dark. But if you lift a little bit while it's still dry, don't worry. while it's still wet. So it looks really, really intense. That's okay. We can clean our brush, wipe it pretty dry, and use a paintbrush as a vacuum to suck up some paint. So see now, see how much lighter that is compared to that? Lot less like a death metal band. We don't want a death metal band. There we go. Watch shadows. So now I'm just kind of rubbing around with plain water to soften my shadow. All right, we're already starting to get there. Good. Okay, so now right in the center of this nose, I want you to paint a line that goes straight up. And then there's already paint there. So just on each side, Spread it down. Okay. Now I'm just coming around, kind of scrubbing a little bit, not too hard, just so it's not a harsh line. Um, Zoom in so you can see. 
kind of hard to tell when it's small, but you see how I went straight. Okay. Do this over again. So see how I went straight down the middle, and on each side, straight down. And if it's too dark, I can always suck it up. See? And if you want to just kind of make it so it doesn't have a harsh line, but I always scrub the sides with plain water. There we go. There we go. Let that dry. Okay. So their ears are darker. Here, here, just around. Oh, yeah. And then on the inside, you don't have to fill the whole thing, just like make a couple lines. Go click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. You can scribble it in there. And while it's still wet, clean off your brush and stop up most of the paint. That way it's not super dark, but there's still something in there that makes it not perfect white. There we go. Okay, so we're still waiting for that to dry. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to start reading that story. So, so far, the medicine man went into the forest to get advice from um, the spirits that are the. Um, it's a long list. The, the wolf the bobcat, the fox, and the cougar. And the cougar said, yeah, we'll help you as long as you don't hunt our people or if you don't eat our people. So now the medicine man has returned to uh, the council that sent him out. Um, and now we're at the story. Some of the warriors took it as not real, but the medicine man argued that it was real that the spirits want all the Soshone Bonops to journey with him back to the spirits to show that he is telling the truth. So it was a big migration of Shoshone Bonops that followed the star and followed the medicine man. They came into the clearing and the women and children were scared because they saw the spirits there, the wolf, the fox, the, bo the bobcat, and the cougar, especially the cougar the leader of the spirits, because he had a head of an Indian and his paws were hands. The cougar told them, don't be scared, we're the spirits. We know what you've come for. We will help you. And so the spirits said their prayers and all of a sudden, the medicine man started rising into the air. As he rose up into the air, the spirits shot down lightning. Then all of a sudden, the forest turned into fire. It surrounded those evil little things that, and they burned. Then the fire went out, went back down again, and the medicine man came back down. And the spirit said, you are okay now. So that's the reason why Shoshone Banox, even to this day, I haven't seen it happen yet, that they will not hunt the wolf, the fox, the bobcat, or the cougar because they are still upholding their promise to the spirits for helping them get rid of those evil little beings. Yay! I know I in a lot of these stories, there's a deal. You do this and we'll do that. And they, I was gonna say at the beginning, oh, they always break the deal. <laughs> but this time they didn't break the deal. Yeah, yeah, like uh, in the in the salmon one, like it broke the deal, and then there was a consequence. Like, oh, now you know our secret. Um, yeah, it's interesting. 
if you don't want to do it, well, maybe that's maybe that's part. I, I don't want to get too historical, but maybe that's part of the whole thing. Is they they're really into deals, and and their deals uh, weren't always uh, followed through with. But when you break a deal, there's consequences. So. Yeah, yeah, there's consequences. Messy. Oh, they make such a mess. Good thing I can cover it with trees. Okay, so everything's pretty dry. Let's go down here. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to lift dry paint. So I did this, I want it to fade, and it's already dry. I can't lift it. How am I going to fix it? Well, you could take your brush, just get it wet, and you can just paint over with plain water where you want the paint to lift. And it's reactivating, like how we get our paint sweat at the beginning of class, it's reactivating. And you can let it sit for a little bit. You can not very rough because you don't want to ruin the paper. You can kind of scrub it a little bit with your paintbrush. See, I'm just making little tiny little um, scrubbing motions, little circular movements. All right. And you see how it's already kind of moving around. It's already kind of lifting. And then using a clean part of your paper towel, just Boom, see, it lifted. And it's okay if it's not perfect, especially in this instance, because it's going into shadow, the sun isn't hitting that area, but you could go over it a couple of times. You could let it dry and then wet it again, and then you can do it a couple of times. But this is a good trick if you want. It's kind of fade away effect. So see, perfect, done. Don't have to mess with it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more on this side, just a little bit, not too much, just a little line. There we go. I like it. Okay. So now we can keep working on our face. We still have a bunch of our uh, dark brown left. Brush, I'm using my tiny brush. Oh, blue. But it's not, it's just really dark brown. Okay. So now I'm going to go on each side of what's called their jowls, sides of their muzzle, their mouth. And just kind of trace the sides. Not every cougar has these um, markings. I just particularly like the ones that do. Therefore, we're painting these marks. Ooh. I'm just coming back, softening it a little bit. Now we're going to trace the eye. So this is going to be a lot of detail. Uh, I recommend trying with your tiny brush. If it's too hard, if it's too small, it's okay. You can use a marker if you need to. Oh, before you do that though, let's do the coloring of the eye. Getting ahead of myself. So um, mountain lion eyes, they can be like a gold color, they can be 
brown. I think I've even seen like a light green. We make it a magical one with rainbow eyes. I'm gonna have mine be a little bit like a golden brown color. So I'm using a lot of yellow, a little bit of red. A little touch of blue just so it's not orange. And I'm just filling in these tiny little circles that are on the inside of the eye. Okay. And while that is uh, drying, we can keep using our dark brown you can outline the lips right here, our mouths. Uh, we can outline our paws a little bit more. Could even put in some more if your rock is dry. I want to make sure your rock is dry. Even put in some more rock texture. Um, I don't like it to be exact. I want it to be random. So I'm just kind of going tap 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 with the side of my brush. So it's it's making like a interesting random texture. It doesn't look man made. It's definitely part of nature. All right, let that do its thing. Just come around if I need any more outlining. Okay. Once you're happy with uh, the outlining, or any uh, extra shading. We're still waiting for those eyes to dry. We need to fill in the nose. Um, mountain lions have the most adorable pink nose. If, uh, since we're using, you probably don't have a pink. You might. Some of the uh, watercolors that are aimed more towards little kids like I have a Crayola set like I have a watercolor set that's by Crayola that has a bunch of like neon pinks and purples um you might have pink if you don't have pink though just use red and just use a lot of water because the more water you add to your paint the lighter it becomes and how do you make pink? Red and white. You don't have white, so with watercolor, you just mix red and a lot of water. So I'm happy with my little pink. That was even so cute. Oh my God. Okay, still waiting for my eyes to dry. That's okay. While we're still waiting, um, we can start putting in our trees. And how we do those trees, uh, we've done it before in other um, in other lessons. We did it once when we did the bear. Is we're gonna do the way the Bob Ross does. We're going to first mix a green. And I'm still using my dark brown. So I'm just gonna clean a little section down here and keep my brown for when I need it. 
So we're going to mix a green. So I'm going to pick up my blue. And bring my brush and then pick up my yellow. Mix it together. All right. I'm going to make a whole forest. So I need more green than that. That looks a little lime green. So your green's probably gonna have a little bit more blue than yellow. I want it to have like a, a darker foresty color. You don't want it to be like a lime green. That's a nice one. I'm kind of like an army green. So once you have your green, I'm just going to use my small brush. And you want to think about like, okay, how tall are my trees going to be? I want my mountain lion to be the main focus. So maybe the tree shouldn't be taller than my mountain lion. Maybe I'm going to have them a little shorter. Uh, when you figure it out like, okay, I think I'm going to have a couple here. Maybe one here, maybe two here. How about two on each side? Next, we're going to draw a line straight down. Notice how I'm, I'm not holding my brush like it's a pencil. I'm holding it like, like this. And that's just gonna help me bring my line straight down. It takes a lot of practice, it's okay. You don't get it the first time. So there. So that's going to be where my first tree's at. Be a little taller. There we go. I don't want my trees to be all the same height. I want some variety. So maybe this tree in this corner is going to be a little shorter. Bring all the way down here. Okay. I'm happy with that. Let's put a tree over here. Going right in the middle of the tail. I don't want a bunch of trees kind of busying up with its tail. I really like the shape of its tail. I don't want it the same length as or the same height as this tree. I want it to be more interesting. Maybe I'll make it a little higher. I don't want it to be the same height as my mountain lion, but I want it to be higher than that tree. So again, Going to take my line all right down. Okay. All right. I'm happy with that. Three trees. So now you've planned out your forest. And you could use a small brush or a big brush. You're going to end up with a more um, lush tree if you use your bigger brush. I kind of like um, my. Pine trees are a little more spindly. So I'm using my little brush. I'm just going to start tapping back and forth. What I mean by that is I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start tap, 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 tap. And then over here, tap, 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 tap. And then back and forth, tap, 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 tap. Back and forth, tap, 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 tap. And we're just sneaking our way all the way down. And the reason that we, uh, we, we tap instead of drawing, you know, typical Christmas tree shape is exactly that. We don't want a typical stamp. We want it to look like nature. And when I get close to my puma, my mountain lamb, my cougar, whatever you want to call him, I'm just being very mindful. I might even outline a little bit since I know my tree is going to go beyond him. There we go. All the way down. And oh no, this tree is getting kind of cornered. That's okay. We can uh, go over it when this one's dry. 
So don't try to fill in the whole thing. You'll notice that I have a few white spaces. That's good. We're painting trees, not walls. Okay. So where are we? And I need more green. So I'm going to let that dry before I do this other tree. I'm going to do this tree now. So again, we're starting at the top. Now we're moving side to side, going top, 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 top. 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 All the way down. And slowly getting bigger as we go down. Ooh, I like this one. Look at it. Oh my God. I'm getting better. It's a little tricky when it gets near the tail. Just kind of be as careful as you can. You can outline the tail first and then go down. Oh, yeah. Okay. This tree is almost dry. I'm going to let it dry a little bit more. My eyes are dry, though. I can start doing that dark brown I want to do. The eyeliner. We're letting our trees dry. Now back to the face. And take your time with the trees. Don't walk around the time. Almost there, almost to the finish line. Okay. So when we get to the eyes, we're just going to outline the shape of the eye. Remember, this is too hard. You could always use a marker, okay? And you know how we have whites in our eyes? Where, you know, you see your, um, your pupil, the color of your eye, and the whites of the eyes? Uh, you don't see the whites of the eyes on cougars. Not when they're looking straight at you like this, at least. So we're just gonna fill in the rest of the eyes with this dark color. Down. 
get true cat eye fashion. And just like in high school, I can't do my cat eyes straight. That's okay. They're sisters, not twins. Okay. And then you're going to draw two dots. You unleash, the, you unleash the inner demon of the tiger. It does tiger. look pretty demonic. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's why it's too hard, Cecily. You should have used a marker. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, if I wanted to, oh, this is scary. Yeah, so I did a little bit more than I should have, but it's okay. If I wanted to, I could lift this um, this dark after it dries, <laughs> but I'll do that uh, after class because we're actually running over. So, um, so after you get the eyes going, you can also put in whiskers. So very lightly, you might want to practice first. So whoop, whoop, notice, whoop, let me see, let me zoom out. So I'm going, whoop, whoop. so I'm lifting up. When I do it, that way it tapers at the end. So when you do your um, little whiskers, you're gonna go. Whoop, whoop. There's a couple. You don't see them that much. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Again, right here, where you, they would have eyebrows. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna rush through, do my last tree. Since this is dry, go down. And go tap, 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 tap. And tap, 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 tap. And we're gonna go out more and more. And it's okay if it's not super dark. It's still gonna be a nice effect with the layering. And then we're done. And I can already tell you. What? <laughs> you may be you. done, but. I like uh... that one better. <laughs> I do like my trees more in this one, though. So I'll let you guys finish. Um, if we had more time, uh, this technique is when your paintbrush feels a little bit drier and you can easily get like these more drier streaks. You do that if you wanted to, they'll give you more of like a rocky texture. Um, we're running over time though, so do that maybe after class. Um, how's everybody doing? How did everybody do? Anybody have uh, any cougars they want to share? I'm still doing trees. My right. cougar has no eyes. Oh, no. Yeah. He will, though. All right.
Definitely went overboard with the eyes, but it's okay. Oh, it was worth it. This is, <laughs> this is a wonderful one. Oh, thank you. This is what I think I think of cougars when I see cute pictures of them on Google. And this is what I think a cougar is probably going to look like when I see it in real life. <laughs> Demonic and scary, and I'm going to <laughs> be very frightened. <laughs> it's like one of the main those and snakes. I'm always, whenever I hike alone with the dogs, I'm like. <gasps> Every rattling leaf is a snake, and every moving shadow is a mountain lion about to eat me. <laughs> yeah, we've gone over, but um, so we finish up with the eyes and some stuff on the rocks, and, and we're kind of there. So I didn't finish my shadows, more shadows, okay. Shadows, eyes, and rocks. Yeah, so you uh, can go over your shadows a little bit more. Um, just like touching up where you think needs to be more like if, if I had more time on this, I probably would go over one more time with my body shadow just so it would push uh, the back half of the cat more. Um, yeah. I like this guy's tail more. I don't want to hurry. I'm going to wait. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, if anybody wanted to take pictures, I know that you guys like taking pictures and we can work on stuff at your own leisure. You can I'll give you a moment to screenshot it. Um, and then I'm going to stop sharing the screen and we can share each other's work. And then we'll end class. I'll give you a couple more seconds to uh, take a picture if you need to. Uh, remember, you can always rewatch the class somehow. I haven't figured out how, but um, it seems it's easy. Easy. Okay. Go to the website and where it says videos. Easy a little. Oh, okay. Nice to... The the JLI Academy website. Yeah. So you don't have to actually think about finding it. You just go to the website and it'll connect you. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Well, I had trouble finding them too for a while. I thought this, I had this no is... idea. I was like, okay, well, maybe they're somewhere on uh, on Zoom. I need to find or. <laughs> yeah, where do you start? The internet's too big. Mister, okay, hold on. I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm going to remove my pen and then I'm going to show the list. Oh, okay, so hold on. Let's oh, see. wow. Let me get you spotlighted. There you are. It's so pretty. I love it. And I love your. Oh, look at those little paws. So great. So cool. And the trees look really good. Really good. Definitely doing that for it. Hey, there she That one has the eyeshadow for sure. <laughs> it's too much. Oh, it looks so good, though. Oh, you're a demon. <laughs> the demon cat, yes. Cat. Yes. Oh, thank you for sharing. Uh, Natalie and Tracy, did you want to share yours? You guys there? You're, you're muted if you're talking to us, Natalie and Tracy. Okay, so let's show. Here we go. Oh! Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> wow. oh, the tiny little eye. Oh, spotlight. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, he looks like a kitty cat. Yeah, it looks kind. So, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We, we didn't get Natalie's. I just saw the little picture. Yeah, hold on. Is it, is it up now? I think it is. Nope, it's still you. Okay, hold on. 
Still you. <laughs> like, where is the spotlight? What do I know? I can't see the spotlight where. Put it on a pin. Uh, Natalie and Tracy, can you show your um, cat one more time? Spotlight. Yeah, there it is. But it isn't spotlighted yet. There we go. Now that one, it looks a little like a kitten because it has yes. a nice big head. There's a really old cartoon. Uh, it's about a white lion named Kimbo the lion, and it reminds me of that. Oh, it's so cute! Oh, that's good. Trees still yeah. need work, so do mine. There you go. Here's my not uh, eyes yet, but. Okay. Okay, hold on. Spotlight. Oh, I love it. Well, I, I like him the trees, but he has no eyes. It looks like it's ready to be framed already. Like you have a frame there already. <laughs> Eyeshadow first. <laughs> it looks really good. I'm excited to see it when it's finished. Well, everybody finish and send them in for our art show. And then we'll all be seeing them in not very long. Yeah. June 30th. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Cecily. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.